I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Land Rover Defender ninety P four hundred X Dynamic S without launch control brake boost. This thing rips pretty decently, I'd say. Horsepower and torque three hundred and ninety five horsepower, four hundred and six pound feet of torque from a three liter inline six cylinder turbo with a forty eight volt mild hybrid system. So this being a 90 means it's the two door where the 110 was the four door. Yeah, so we had previously driven the four door. We both really liked it, but we also both really liked the looks of the 90. So that's why we wanted to drive this one. Yeah, and it's definitely uh, much less practical when you have both rows of seats up and you look at the trunk space. Now that I have a child, I got to worry about that stuff. I could not fit a stroller back there if I had a car seat in the back. So this is the Explorer pack, just like we had in the 110. However, this one doesn't have the snorkel, which I think made this engine sound so much better. You can actually hear like turbo blow off valves from that engine. This one you can hear a little bit, so I'm just gonna floor it, see if we can hear it. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Now I can't hear it at all, and I actually like the look of this way more without all the stuff on it. Yeah, I get that, and it makes sense for the 90 as well, but it would be so cool to have like all the stuff on the 90 as well. And color wise, this is a fantastic color. This green is wicked. Yeah, the green's really cool. It does sparkle in the sunshine. Yeah, and I love like, again, with the shape, how hard that back body line cuts itself off. Like you can really see the difference there. It's definitely like cartoony, like especially as a two door. I'm actually surprised that Land Rover even did this. Okay, uh, I guess to finish off the looks, we've got the normal headlights that are really cool that we like. Yeah, that's part of the cartoonish kind of character of this car. Except you can't have them on while you're parked, which makes taking photos and videos of it very tricky. Yes, yeah, so you have to have someone sitting in the driver's seat anyways. Tail lights still look perfect. Yep, overall this thing looks great. How about the wheels? Do you like these ones? Yeah, they're pretty cool. I mean, they're simple five spoke. You can't go wrong with this. I want those cool white Steelys. Yeah, Steelys is definitely cool. JLRPR, hook it up. But what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Defender 90? The Cross Contact LX Sport. And if we look at our door handles, we don't have the proximity touch to get in. You actually need to click that button, but you can just click the handle on the very trunk to open it. You don't have to like click a button there. Yeah, it would have been nice if they did the same thing for the actual door handles. Yeah. So this is all wheel drive and it can vary the torque to the front, to the back, to each individual wheel. So let's send it into cliche corner. Yeah, lots of body roll as you'd expect. We do have air suspension and that makes the ride so comfortable, but let's see what we can get out of cliche corner and yeah it just cuts the power <laughs> it makes sense i mean it's a big suv so we did that send and cliche corner in sport s plus race mode right uh, we actually don't have any race modes or sport modes here. What, what modes do we have <laughs> uh so if we hit our drive hang on before to get, to get to our drive modes, we press this little button over here and then our drive mode selector is the climate control selector. So then you go through that and then we have eco, comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud, ruts, sand, rock crawl, wade, and configurable. And auto. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of drive modes. I mean, they're all for like off-roading basically. Yeah, nothing, nothing for sportiness. No, I just start this thing and drive it in whatever mode it starts in. Which comfort. Is, exactly. And it's nice. It is very comfortable though. Yeah, I, I love the air suspension on this car. I think it's... Uh oh. I bro. adjusted the. Now we gotta click the fan and dial it down. Man. Rookie move. Yeah, sorry. Was your first time using temperature knobs, knobs to change your climate? S second, and, and it still modes. hasn't gotten better. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ridiculous how they did this. I, now, now there's no fan speed, Yuri. Now we gotta. No, it was at one. Two. It was already at one. Then we had it at three. No, and one is nice and quiet. No way. It's too hot today, bro. And one of those drive modes was weighed, so we can go through up to 90 centimeters of water, which is pretty cool. And then we also have the depth sensors that if you're in still water, it'll tell you what depth of water you're in. It doesn't work in like rivers and stuff. Yes, very cool gimmick, 10 out of 10. Yeah, speaking of gimmicks, boom! We have a $500 rear view camera that is also a camera and a mirror. Yeah, and I think those probably come in handy if you have like a bunch of attachments to the back and stuff, like if you are going full safari mode. Yeah, because then you have the spare tire back there and then we still have the headrest, so it actually does help. And with the air suspension, you can raise or lower the height independently, which is really cool. And the suspension is actually really, really comfortable. I know we mentioned that already, but the coolest thing is in the back, you can actually raise or lower the air suspension. Yeah, when you're loading stuff into the back and it actually really does help and it moves pretty quickly. I feel like that with the engines off though, you can only do it like once or twice. But what's cool is we have AC power back there. So if you're using a computer, you can raise it up like a standing desk and then it's like, you know, a little bit more, more ergonomic. Yeah, for sure. And does it help with boxes, Yuri? Box test.
nine boxes in the two door. Sorry we couldn't fit these boxes in it. And before it's my turn to drive, we just want to give a big shout out to our buddy Chad who sells these things over at Grand Touring Toronto. So this is a free sponsor segment for him. That's why there's the yellow bar going along the bottom. Uh, go buy a JLR from him. Yeah, also for the record, uh, Chad owes us pizza because he lost a F1 pool that we were in and he still hasn't given us that pizza. Yeah, use code word pizza for a discount on your Defender purchase. That is not a real thing. Don't use that code word, but definitely mention pizza if you do see Chad. Shout out Chad. <laughs> <laughs> and right before you drive this powertrain, I still really like it. It's got such a good amount of power for this type of car. We do have a ZF 8-speed auto. I find that, that it does shift kind of slow in this, but it's still very smooth. So I do like this overall powertrain. All right, enough about this from me in my driver's seat perspective. Let's get Yuri's driver's seat perspective. Start low traction launch control. Okay. We're on a high traction surface, so let's see how this does. Gradually apply the accelerator. Oh, that sounds boring. Well then. It's still some good power, but there is a type of launch control in here for low traction stuff. If you're like stuck in the mud. And if you're watching on your TV and you want to subscribe, I think click down or settings and then go to the right and there should be a subscribe there somewhere. I know it's very difficult. And if you're on your phone or your computer, just click the subscribe button. If you want to subscribe. I would assume they want to subscribe if they're clicking the button. Eh, it's kind of hard to get people to subscribe. Yeah. Well. That's why everyone's got subscribe process that everyone hates. <laughs> so now to some things on the interior that I really like. All of the colors and materials are perfect in here. I think this is like the best spec ever for something like this. And it is perfectly matched to the exterior as well. Yeah, the green is awesome. You get green on the seats and on the dash and the materials are different and everything. And I love this off-white that's on the steering wheel. There's no piano black really. It's all just like flat black. This is what should be in like every single car ever. Totally agree. And we have this cool section over here where it says Defender. We got grab handles. We can actually pass stuff behind the screen, which is pretty cool. And other neato stuff, we've got visors. Let's do the visor test real quick. Oh, here we go. Get this one in early. Three, two, one. Yes. Good and job. then secret visor. Ooh, we've got extra pass. Super pass. Our cup holders are great. They fit a small just fine, but I had a fully loaded medium coffee and these grips are way too tight. Like yeah, way, way too tight. Had to do the tape hack to make it slide easier. So yeah, I don't like it either because I had this coffee and like this lid almost popped off. Yeah, it's, it's crunching the cup. Yep. And then since this is only a two door, let's check the back seat room with Jacob at six foot one and a half. It is actually remarkably good back there and I really like the Alpine lights back there. And for everyone complaining that we always mention these six foot one and a half, some people only watch one of our reviews and never come back again. So we're doing it for them. Yeah, so thank you for complaining because it means that you watch our videos, but we're also doing it for the people that are brand new to the channel. And there's no windows that roll down back there, which does kind of suck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then we do have this huge sunroof that goes open and close. And then the seats up here, very, very comfortable. Like super comfortable. 10 out of 10 comfort. Love them. And then back to the cup holder area, we do have this one little panel that we can use to cover our cup holders, but I don't know why anyone would ever do that. We've got some storage compartments below. We've got USB and USB-C, which is pretty nice because I'm not ready to dive full into USB-C. And our armrest, got a fridge in there. That's right. It is an option and we do have it this time, which is great. And we also have some hard buttons up here. So thank you very much Land Rover for actually providing hard buttons. Makes sense in a rugged SUV, but the volume control button is actually kind of hard to reach. Yeah, the knob is super far, but at least it's a knob and not like a dumb slider that's piano black and it's covered in fingerprints like that ID4 we have. Brutal. This week as well. Yeah, but we can also adjust the volume with our steering wheel, which is nice. Okay, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Yep, and the resolution is great. Reverse 360 camera. We do have the 360 modes that go around, but only when like you're in park or drive. When you're in reverse, I can't get those modes, but we do have the mode where you can see underneath the car, the which clear is- clear sight or whatever it's called. It's pretty cool when you're backing up on driveways, you just feel like you know more where you're parking, but like, I just want to see where my wheels are so I don't scratch them against curbs. Even though this is fat sidewalls, it's just like, it'd be hard to scratch these wheels. If Kia and Hyundai and Genesis can get it right, why can't Land Rover? And then I noticed some lag in this infotainment still, like in the satellite radio section. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's definitely a huge improvement over previous JLR systems. And then our gauge clusters are standard JLR gauges where you can like change the way they look with two pods or like center, stuff on the sides. Nothing new and innovative, just normal stuff. And our lane keep and radar cruise. Radar cruise is very good but the lane creep just kind of pulls you in. It doesn't keep you centered. And the sound system is good. I guess like pretty much every Land Rover has got a good sound system. Yeah, this does have the Meridian system, so. Okay, one more thing I remember noticing, uh, vehicle dimensions. You can click that in your infotainment and you know the size. So Dude. if you need to get into a weird spot, 
it's perfect. Like I need this in my Raptor. I literally Google my Raptor specs before I enter any parking garage. It's the most frustrating thing. This is the best. And you have your approach and departure angles. And I think in the 110 we had, we had a whole bunch of stuff on it. So we didn't know for sure. So with all that stuff out of the way, I'm gonna floor it one time in drive and then we'll get to the price. Sport. Still took a second to get into gear though. But the boost is nice, like you feel it. Yeah, it has good power, especially going uphill. So let's get to the price. This starts at $69,900. Canadian. Nice. And this one's optioned out to $89,140. I think that's a fair price for a luxury Land Rover Defender. Yeah, and the only thing that really competes with this would be the new Bronco pretty much. Which doesn't exist because nobody has them yet. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, been delayed because of everything. That chip shortage. Chip shortage, COVID, whatever. Oh everything. man, it's like everyone needed to make their own chips. <laughs> okay. Um, would you take this over a four door after living with it a little bit? Yeah, I, I think I actually would. As cool as this is, like if I didn't have a family or if I didn't have a kid on the way or whatever, yeah, I'd probably go for this, but realistically the four door. Yeah, with the family, I can't justify the non-practicality, but I think looks wise, this is so much cooler. And I just want to see one with the Steelies. <laughs> I'd like, be so excited to see the two door on the road. Yeah, exactly. This is going to hold its value, I think, way better down the line. Yeah, I would agree with that. At least I would think so. So just wait for all the prices to drop down to their bottom. Yeah. Buy in the dip, right? <laughs> Buy the dip and then the dip becomes the dip and, and then the dip keeps dipping. Yeah, dip it. Don't, I don't want to talk about it. And if you're shopping for a new Land Rover Defender and you live in the United States, there's a true car link below. There's a discount when using the straight pipes link. You can also shop for a used Land Rover Defender using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So then this or speculative Bronco. Ooh, I mean, I haven't driven the Bronco, but looks wise, I'm gonna go with the Bronco. Just strictly looks wise. Uh, I would almost like this more just because it's it's not American. It's a little bit more like foreign and got that little coolness to it. But you can take off the panels and everything on a Bronco and the doors and everything. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd like to do that, you know what I mean? I know what you mean, but you can, right? Yeah, and then I guess this or a Wrangler, like, yeah, I guess the other Wrangler would compete technically, sort of. This kind of cooler and newer. Yeah. Unless you had the V8. This or a V8 uh, Wrangler. Well, the, this is going to get a V8. So So we'll save that for the future. Let us know what you think of the Defender 90 compared to the 110. Which one would you get and why? And watch our 110 review. Thank you for watching our 90 review.